A sacred ceremony to mark the transition to a new era for the world's oldest continuous monarchy. With two of the three mysterious imperial regalia, a sword and a jewel, the emperor gave his final speech. Since ascending the throne 30 years ago, I have performed my duties as emperor with a deep sense of trust and respect for the people, and I consider myself fortunate to have been able to do so. The demands of public life became too much for this country's much-loved symbol of state, now aged 85. The role has changed dramatically. His father, the former emperor Hirohito, was revered as a god during World War II. He was a big part of Japan's military rise and fall. His son has overseen a far more peaceful era, but his rule has been marked by disaster, both natural and man-made. After the Kobe earthquake in 1995 and the 2011 earthquake, tsunami and nuclear meltdown in Fukushima, Akihito met and mourned with his people. Kneeling down and talking to victims, talking to elderly people who were uh, displaced after the tsunami, I think that's very, very important. It's a bit like in England, Princess Diana going to the AIDS hospitals. You know, it had the same symbolic importance. On the streets of Sugamo in Tokyo, the signs to herald the new era are already up, but memories of the emperor remain as clear as ever. We're the same age, and our birthdays are close, so we lived almost the same time. I feel very close to him, and also think his duty was tough. I wouldn't be able to do it. The incoming emperor, Naruhito, will accede to the throne at a ceremony here tomorrow. It'll mark the beginning of a new era for Japan, one that locals hope will be remembered for its international events like the Olympics and not for devastating tragedies. Jake Sturmer, ABC News, Tokyo.